we will see how to connect a React Next.js application with a WebSocket implemented in Golang. So to do that, first of all, we as the React application, as the client of the WebSocket, we have to make some requests to the server to tell to the server, hey, I want to open a WebSocket with you. First of all, this. To do that, we as a client have to create this new WebSocket object, passing here the endpoint where the server will implement and upgrade you as a client through the WebSocket. So that's for the client, only that. Now in the, in the server side, in this case of Go, we have to get a specific endpoint to the WebSocket. And this endpoint of the server have to match with this endpoint that we put here in the, in the client side. There have to be the same. The client have to call to this endpoint. The server have to have a dedicated endpoint to open WebSockets with clients. In this case, for this server will be slash ws and we'll have a handler to make that upgrade of clients through WebSockets. Also, we need this course policy to make sure that our client, in this case, will be the React application that will be running on the local host 3000, get all the permissions that they need to open that, those WebSockets and so on. This is a go routine that we need, but it's just for the chat application. This go routine will be explained in detail later. Now we will concentrate on other things like how to connect a React application with the WebSocket and how to send and receive messages through the WebSockets. Only that for now. So we just need these functions, the, the, the endpoint dedicated to open the WebSocket, the course policy, and all obviously we have to run our server. Just that. Now we will see what does this handler. Well, this handler has a lot of line of code commented. Those lines are lines of logic of the chat application. We only need these lines to understand how WebSocket works, how WebSocket send and receive message. This is for the chat application and have some logic of the chat application itself. That this is more generic, this, this code. So first of all, we need an upgraded that will be from this module of WebSocket that upgrader. Here we pass some parameters like the read buffer size, the size of the buffer to read from this buffer, and also the write buffer size, the space that we can share data through the WebSocket. And this check origin parameter that is in reality a function that receives the request of the client when the client make this request, because this is a request using the protocol of WebSocket, but it's a request. We receive the request and well, with, with the request, we have a lot of information like the URL from this client games, the body, for example, or a lot of information from the request. And we can, as a server, decide if the client have the right to make this WebSocket or not. In this case, we just have the return true. So all the clients will have the rights to make this WebSocket with us for this particular video. Here we open, we upgrade the connection with our client, passing here the response writer, the request, and this pointer nil. This pointer reference to some previous connection, but for this case, like we are starting the, the first connection with the client, we only pass nil because we don't have any connection, any previous connection. So we just have to pass an EL here. And well, then we check if there is an error with this upgrade connection. If there is an error, we just have to inform to the client. And then if there is not an error, all it's okay. We have to make this. This is a defer function that makes that the server close the connection properly when the client finished the connection or when something happens, the server will be responsible to close the connection and close all the resources. Here we have a Go routine that it, that will be running on the background, but for this, we will be this later. First, I want to see this for loop. This for loop never ends. It will be running over and over again every time. But here, the server will be waiting for some message of the client. This for loop never ends, but when the for loop goes here, server is waiting for some message. Is waiting for the event of a message in the WebSocket. When the server receives a message, well, execute this function and get the message type, the payload, and an error. If there is an error, well, we, we just have to print it. But if there is not an error, we 
are getting the message in bytes with this payload. And what we do here, what I like to do here is transform this payload, this array of bytes in some structure of message that I can understand. This is structure, it's here, have an ID, an user ID, a Boolean variables, and the message, finally. This is the string of the message that we sent from the client side. So what this function do is wrap the array of bytes and transform to this structure of message. And if there is no errors, we can print the message as a string. So this, this for loop is to read message from the client. Now we will see how to send message to the client as a server without the request, the previous request from the client. For that is this go routine that will be running on the background and well, have a counter initialized on zero and then a for loop and other for loop that never ends. And this for loop, what this does is create a message and a structure of message with the count as an ID to identify the message with some number that it's modifying every time. And well, this is the message that we will see on the client side. Hello, I am the server. I am sending this message without your previous request. Okay, so we have to do this. That is the json.marshall. So once we have this message structure, we have to wrap this message structure to a byte, to an array of bytes, because we have to send the bytes through the WebSocket. We, we can't send a structure through the WebSocket. We, we have to send bytes. So we have to marshal this message and well, we will get the rate of bytes or an error. If we have an error, well, like always, we print this message and we'll continue. This continue will get here again. We will try to make the, the message again and again. And here, well, we, we use the connection to write the message through the WebSocket. So here in the first parameter, we are declarating the type message that we are sending through the WebSocket. And here as a second parameter, we are sending the bytes, the rate of bytes that we want to send. Again, if there is an error, we just have to print it to inform us <laughs> as, as the maintainers of the server, we have to know there is an error. And here I am incremented the counter by one and also a time that sleep that will be waiting for five seconds to go back here and send again another message. That's for see slowly the message came from, from the client side. So with, with this explained, we just have to see this in action. So to do that, we just have to go here to the application. I have to log in first. And now when, when I open some chat like this or anything, any chat, I will be open a WebSocket because this function, it's call it when I open some chat, maybe a chat with a friend one by one, or maybe a chat with a group. But the case is when a chat is open, this function is executed and will create the WebSocket from the client to the server. So I will open this chat with Gonzalo and the WebSocket will be opened. So if we see on the console, we are receiving the message from the server every five seconds. Hello, I am the server and I am sending this message with, without your previous request. That's correct. I am not requesting this information from the server. Well, how we receive that information in the client? Because we are sending this, but how the client knows or is listened to this? Because the client have to be listened in some way to this message that the server maybe will send to the client. That it's here in the chat component. We are setting this socket that on message event. And every time that this on message event happens, will execute this function. This function gets an event as a parameter and well, this event has an attribute that is the data of this event and that is what we want to read. Here I parsed this data to a JSON, to 
a JSON format, and then we just print on the console like this message from the server. And every time that the server sent a message, this on message event happens and will execute this function. So every time that the server sends a message, this function is executed and print on the console this structure, this, this JSON that we receive. And here's the message. Hello, I'm the server and I am sending this message without your previous request. That's fine. Now, how we as clients send message to the server using WebSockets. So to do that, we will be using this input here to send message to the WebSocket. I will sh explain you how to make that first in the, in the code. So every time that I type here some message like this, hello, and I press to this button, this send button, this function is executed. This functions, what it does is create an object with the same structure of this message or some parameters of this message structure, but these parameters is all the parameters that we need from the server side to read and understand the data. In this case, for this particular case, this simple case, we just need the message. Then I transform this object to a string using JSON that stringify and I send this string through the WebSocket, just that. And the WebSocket will have to be able to read that data, read those bytes that we can see here, message bytes, and this is the bytes of the message. Like we can see here in the code, we are printing that payload that we received from, from the client. And then in the server, we wrap these bytes through some structure to get the, the data in some readable format. And well, then we just print in the console of the server, the message that we receive from the client. Obviously for the chat application, for example, we do more things. Here is the proof. There is a lot of things that we have to do to make the chat application, but the basics are these. This is how some React application, a front-end application communicate with the WebSocket running in some server, in this case, implemented on Google.